students, good afternoon viewers, I greet you all in Jesus name. Uh, welcome to our today's lesson. I am sorry we are a bit late uh, because of a few technicalities that we have had here and there. Otherwise, I hope you are tuned in. Uh, for those who have tuned in, I want to say you are highly welcome to our Chemistry Wednesday. This is a normal lesson as we have been doing for the last 13 weeks. So uh, for the last week we started a new series on organic chemistry. I already told you that we have a complete series on uh, the periodic table. We have a complete series of the mole and we also have a complete series on uh, the structure and bonding that is for to work. So this is a brand new one, started last week, this is our second lesson and I want to welcome you in session so we can continue together as we learn from home. Uh, so uh, you can also like my YouTube channel, uh, still brand new one, uh, the name is Teacher Kirwa, so you can go there, hit the red button uh, to follow, to subscribe and uh, then you can Keep on viewing my posts, uh, I mean my videos, uh, which are also there. So, uh, those who have tuned in already, welcome, God bless you. So, let's go uh, to our normal business. We have been doing organic chemistry, and uh, last week I did an introduction to this topic. We also did uh, the nomenclature of alkenes. We looked at one part of alkene. Uh, that is nomenclature. Today, I want us to do isomerism. I left when I told you that we are going to start from here and uh, we continue and we shall be okay. So isomerism in alkenes. So let us begin to remind ourselves of a few things that we said in our last lesson. One, we said alkenes belong to a group of compounds. This is hydrocarbon and it is a saturated hydrocarbon. So it belongs to a group of compounds called saturated hydrocarbons. These are the notes that you already have. Now, uh, being saturated hydrocarbon, these uh, the carbon, the, the bonds in alkenes are all single bonds. All are single bonds. That's why we are saying it is saturated hydrocarbon. Number two, also we said that alkenes have a general formula of Cn H2n plus 2 where n represents the number of carbon atoms. It, uh, I mean, of course, starting from 1 to a million. So this one uh, is the general formula of alkenes. Now, this uh, formula here represents what we called in our last lesson the homologous series of alkenes. It, be, it, it represents the homologous series of alkenes, where we say homologous series is a group of compounds which have the same chemical formula, same chemical reactions, but and they also exhibit a gradual change in uh, physical properties. Uh, okay, still looking at alkenes, we say the first member of alkene is where N is equal to 1, that is carbon uh, number 1. And the, the formula is CH4. Now, being N is equal to 1, so this is 1 here. Now, 2N is 2 times 1 is 2, and then plus 2 is 4. That's why we have CH4. The second one is where N is equal to 2. N is equal to 2, you have C2H. Uh, so, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, so C2H6. Uh, also, in our uh, discussion on nomenclature, we said that the, the first member is CH4, it is called methen. So we say meth is the prefix. So meth is prefix for n is equal to 1. For n is equal to 2, the prefix is eth. n is equal to 3, the prefix is prop. So that we have propen, uh, methen, propen, uh, butane, etc. We have but for number 4. We have pent. So we looked at the first uh, 10 members of this series and we said we have up to decan. So from here, from number 5, it follows the naming of polygons that is done in mathematics. That is pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, 
uh, octagon and so on and so forth. So here we have uh, Bithen. So the, all of them are Alkets. As I told you, Al stands for aliphatic. So this is aliphatic hydrocarbons, which is Alkets. So the suffix is A and E. So that you have Bithen, uh, Ithen, Propen, Butene, uh, Penten, Hexen, ETC. So for the those who just came in today, or uh, those who have not viewed the last lesson, this is what we did. Uh, also, we went ahead to draw, and we said, when you write like this, this represents the molecular formula, which shows the proportions of the atoms, so that you have two carbons and six hydrogens. When you have a structural formula, so this is molecular formula. Now, structural formula shows the structure, so that if you have C2, then you have two carbons. So that is one, two, two carbons, and then six hydrogens. So you, the, the remaining bonds are completed using hydrogen, so that you have, here you have one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So we say that carbon is always surrounded by four covalent bonds. That is what you bear in mind. So uh, that is uh, just a reminder of what we did uh, last week or the other day. So let us look at isomerism. Now isomerism, as we defined isomerism, we said isomerism is existence existence of compounds with the same same uh, molecular formula formula but different structural formulas So these are called this is isomerism. Now the existence of compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formulas. Um, so this constitutes what are called isomers. These compounds are called isomers. So isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formulas. Uh, an example of this. An example of this is uh, let me begin from C4 H uh, H10 we have C4 H10 we know the formula is Cm H2N plus 2 so now if you have Cn H2N plus 2 then uh, this is uh, where n is equal to 4 gives you C4 H10. Let me write a, a, a clear one. C4 H10. Okay, so this C4 H10 is where N is equal to 4. And we said this one is called Butene. Okay, this is called Butene. Now, to draw the structural formula of this, we have 4 cupboards. So, 4 cupboards is 1, 2, 3, Four. Those are four. And then hydrogens are ten. So to complete the remaining covalent bonds of carbon using hydrogen. So for this carbon, you already have one bond. So one, two, three, four. Here you have already you have two already. So one, two, three, four. Here you have two already. One, two, so three, uh, four. Lastly, this carbon here, one, two, three, four. So that is how the structure of uh, butene looks like. The structural formula of butene. Okay. Now, looking at this uh, at this uh, structure closely, you realize that at the end of every carbon atom, this this is uh, when you write. We said we have a structural formula. You have a molecular formula. The structural formula can be open. The way this one is open. Now, or it can be condensed. Condensed is where you, this one is CH3, CH3, this one is CH2, 
this is CH2 and this is CH3. So you find that every last carbon, every carbon which is at the end or the last is of three hydrogens. The rest have two hydrogens. Now, when we break that, Okay, for us to change, if I want to change the formula, this structural formula, I take, you. this is carbon number one, carbon number two, three, and number four. Now, I can take carbon number, uh, carbon number four, and I bring it here to carbon number two, so that we are exchanging this carbon with hydrogen. Now, if I do that, then you will have one, two, three. So, one, two, three. This carbon... I have brought it to carbon number two. So I have, I have brought it here. Okay? So the remaining bonds, you know, we fill with hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then here is one, two, three, and four. All right? So this is what you have. You find, you realize that this is more or less the same as this. The only difference is we have taken the last carbon atom and we have done a transfer. We have transferred it to carbon number two. Okay, so um, all of them are C4H10. The carbon atoms here are four. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is one, two, three, four same. Hydrogen, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So both, all of them have a formula of this. Now, this one is called butane. Okay? This is called butane. It is the double butane that we know. Now, how do we name this? Okay? The isomer now. How do we name this? There are two things I want us to note down when we are naming this isomer. Uh, number one, we have a parent name. Okay? So this is naming, naming of isomers. Okay? Naming of isomers. Number one, we have a parent name. Parent name is given by the longest the longest Continuous, okay, longest continuous carbon chain, all right, the longest continuous carbon chain gives you the parent name, and then number two, we have name, we have the branch, okay, the branch, we look at the name, name, and position. Okay, name and position of the branch. So we have the parent name and then the name and position of the branch. Position is simply, we say, uh, you look at the parent name, the longest continuous carbon chain. So looking at this, the longest continuous carbon chain is, so you have one, two, three. You can as well say one, two, three. So it is three in either way. If you start here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So the longest continuous carbon chain is is uh, is uh, is is of carbon is of three uh, carbons. Okay. So what we are naming is this. Okay, this is the same compound we had there. So what is the parent name? Okay, so we have said the parent name, uh, because it has three carbon atoms, you remember our prefixes, that if it is one carbon atom, then we call it met. Two carbon atoms, we call it eth. Three carbon atoms, we call it prop, etc. So this one, 
because it has three carbon atoms, then we call it propane. Alright? We call it propane because it has three carbon atoms. The longest continuous chain contains three carbon atoms. Uh, two, we look at the branch. Okay? A branch is what deviates from the longest carbon chain. For example, if we take our longest continuous chain to be number one, two, three, then this one is off the, 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 the chain. Because it is off the chain, it becomes a branch. So this one is a branch. Okay? It becomes a jia. Okay? If you have a root, you have a direct root, then you can, uh, you can be having several roads that branch from the main road. So those are branches, the same way here. So we can take this one to be the longest continuous chain, and then this one becomes the, the branch. Now, the branch, you realize that this branch contains one carbon and three hydrogens, all right? It is a CH3 branch, okay? That's a CH3 branch. Now, the CH3 branch, um, when you revisit our, our naming, uh, we have, when you revisit the alkenes, you have CH4 and then C2, H6, C3, H8, ETC. Okay? Now, this is CH3. It is more or less the same as this. So, uh, this is one carbon short of methane. Okay? Now, when you have alkene, this, this is just to revisit, an alkene minus one hydrogen. Okay? An alkene minus one hydrogen gives you a compound called alkyl or alkyl, if you like. So, this one... Uh, let me just use this for purposes of understanding. Uh, but if you have that, if you have an alkene minus one hydrogen, it gives you an alkyl. Mark the alk and the alk. For example, uh, alkene is CH4. This CH4 is called methane. When you minus one hydrogen there, you end up with CH3, okay? CH3 is one hydrogen short. So this CH3 alkyl or alkyl is called a methyl, okay? It's called a methyl. The prefixes are the same. The difference is the suffix. This is il or il. This is a and e. So this is methyl. So for example also the next one if you have CH C2H6 use minus one hydrogen you end up with C2H5. So this is ethane. Guess the name of the next one? If this is ethane, remove one hydrogen. What do you have? Ethyl. Ethyl. So propane, propyl, etc for the rest. So the branch is a CH3. This is CH3. It is a methyl. So the branch is methyl. Now, at position what? Carbon number. So this is carbon number one. Carbon number two. So the branch is at carbon number two. So at carbon number two. Okay? Now the full name, you put together the branch and the parent. So you begin the, 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 to give it to give this a full name, you you start with the branch and then the, 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 the parent name goes to the last. So the name of this is called 2 methyl propane. <laughs> it is called 2 methyl propane. What is the name insinuating or what does the name give this name? When you write, oh sorry, there is an L here. So when you write 2 methyl propane, you are saying propane is the longest carbon chain, carbon three carbons. And then at carbon number two, you have a methyl branch, CH3. So in short, propane is one, two, three. Okay, that one is called propane.
Now at bethyl, bethyl is CH3. So that is what we build. And then the rest you of course fill with hydrogen. Okay? Hi. Next. So that was butane. Let's look at so how many isomers of butane have we mentioned? So we have butane and we have two methyl propane. Now uh, isomers of pentane. Isomers of pentane. Uh, pentane is C five H twelve. We are saying C five because pent pent means five. So five carbon atoms, and we know our general formula is CnH2n plus two. So therefore, to find the formula of pentane, you take C five n is five, and then two times five is ten plus two is twelve. So you have C five H twelve. That is the formula of pentane. So the first one is to draw the structure of pentane, which is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then you complete the bonds, the covalent bonds using hydrogen. So one, two, three, and of course four. This one is two already. So here, there, this is two. This is two already. So two hydrogens, and of course the last one we said three hydrogens. This one is pentane. Okay, uh, so we begin our. Our this isomer number one, isomer number two. You take this carbon, the last carbon. You always take the last carbon and put it in the the, the, the middle carbon atoms. For example, this one is one, two, three, four. So you can take the last carbon, you bring it to carbon number two. So you have the longest chain will be one, two, three, four, and then a branch at carbon number two. So you have one, two. Three, four, and then at he, at this point you 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 bring the last one here, so you have a CH three there. The rest are hydrogens to fill the covalent bonds. There, hydrogen. This is isomer number two. Let us give a name to this isomer. We said you begin with the parent. Okay, so the parent name. You look at the longest continuous chain, one, two, three, four, okay, or one, two, three, four, okay, or one, two, three, four. Are you finding it the same way? So you have one, two, three, four. You can even start from the last end, but we shall look at a rule that guides us which end to begin with. So you can have. One, two, three, four. Somebody else will say one, two, three, four. Now, when you are uh, you are numbering the carbon atoms, you begin with the end that is closer to the branch. For example, here, one, two, three, the branch will be at carbon number three. Okay? You beginning from this side, one, two, the branch will be at carbon number two. So this side takes precedence because it give it gives the the, the, the branch the least uh, number. So it begin you begin from one, two, three. Three, four, and it's not a must that it is a straight. When we say longest continuous, somebody else will start from one, two, three, four, which is correct because this will become your branch at carbon number two. So the parent name, the longest chain is one, two, three, four. Four is called butane. So the longest, the, the longest chain is called the parent name is butane. Okay. Now branch. Okay. What is the branch? At carbon number two, okay, so carbon number two, we have a branch. What is the branch? It is a CH3. We have said CH3 is called methyl. So this is methyl. So the, the, the whole name beca becomes 2-methyl-butane. 2-methyl-butane. Now when we are writing the name also, we are using dash to separate the numbers and the name okay to separate the numbers and the name we say two methyl butane so two dash or hyphen that hyphen separates the number and the name 
Okay. Uh, that is one. Number two, number three. Okay. We can still do the same. Take the last carbon atom, bring it to carbon number two. Okay. So we can take this to replace hydrogen. We always do replacing of hydrogens uh, when you do isomerism. So you take the last, put it at carbon number two, so that you have one, two, three branch branch okay so the longest chain is one two three okay then you have a ch3 there and you have a ch3 there this and that so you have h3 like that okay so this is one, two, three. One, two, three. Then you have two branches. Okay. So the parent or the parent, the parent is because it is three carbon atoms. We call it we call it prop. Okay. So this one becomes propane. So propane is the name, and then branch. You have two branches at carbon number two. You have two branches. You have a, you have a branch here and a branch here. So you have at carbon number two, you have a methyl, and you have another methyl again. Okay. So you have another. Why are you seeing that? We have carbon number two methyl. Do you? Carbon number two methyl. Do you? So we have how many methyls? Two. Now, when we are naming this. When we are naming this, uh, according to what we said here, you begin with the branch. But now you find, you realize we have two branches of the same kind in the same position. All right. When we have branches of the same kind, okay, in the in, in the same position or different, as long as the branches are of the same kind, then we use di, tri. Uh, we use di. Try. We shall write this as our summary. Di, tri, tetra. To show numbers, uh, di means two, tri means three, uh, tetra means four. So, because we have two methyl, okay, so we will call it di methyl. Di methyl to mean two methyls. So the name becomes two, two, di methyl. Uh, propane. Look at the name closely. When you look at this name, the dye, okay, the dye is shown by what you write here. So when we say carbon number two and two, how many are those? Two, okay. So you have dimethyl propane. So the name tells you, when you look at the name, it tells you the parent name is propane. It has three carbon atoms in the longest chain. And then you have two branches of the same kind at the same position. So at carbon number two, you have a methyl. Carbon number two again, you have a methyl. All right? So that is how you draw and you name the isomers. So these are isomers of pentane. So if somebody says, draw and name the isomers of pentane, the first isomer is the noble structural formula of pentane that we know, which is called pentane. Right? The second isomer is this one here, where the longest carbon chain is of four carbons, and, this, and then you have a branch at carbon number two to have two methyl butane. Number three is you have um, two two dimethyl propane to say the longest carbon chain is of three carbons, and then you have a branch of methyl at two positions. Okay. Now let us do a summary of this. Let us summarize uh, isomerism by the following points. Point number one is that you identify the longest continuous carbon chain. Okay, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. Uh, number two, number two is you number the chain. 
number the team from the end the end that is closer to the branch okay number the chain from the end that is closer to the branch number three rule when you are naming an isomer is after you have identified the longest carbon chain and you have numbered the, lo the, the chain beginning from the end that is closer to the branch now of course you identify the branch so identify the branch Okay, identify the branch and uh, branch name, identify the branch name and position. Identify the branch name and position. Uh, when you identify the branch name and the position, then you can write the name, the whole name. So write the name of the The name of the compound. Write the name of the compound beginning with the branch. So you write the name beginning with the branch. As we said, I will do one more example to that effect. Uh -huh. um, Something else also that we can note, which we said in a, in a, a previous example, is uh, the separate the, the position and the name and the name using a hyphen. Let us call it a hyphen. Okay, and separate the numbers, the numbers using comma or commas. I don't know, comma or commas, whatever you call it. Uh, for example, what we did just now. This one here, we say two, two. So we are separating the numbers using a comma. And then separate the, the, the position and the name using a hyphen. So you have two, two, dimethyl. Okay. Uh -huh. Finally, the final point to note there, final NB uh, is, we have said, uh, use die use die try or tetra use prefixes die try or tetra to indicate okay use die try tetra uh, prefixes to indicate the number of to indicate the number of branches okay you use prefixes die try tetra to indicate the number of branches uh, the same way we have seen here that you use die to show they are two methyls. Okay, so we are saying die. If they were three, then you say try. And the try is shown by the numbers that you have indicated here. Okay. Now, finally, on this, we have two types of branches. You can still write it under uh, the point to note. So there are two types of branches.
Number one is what we have said, and I'll kill branch. I'll kill branch, ethyl, ethyl, propyl. At your level, you, are, you may not go even to propyl. The major ones that you will be looking at are methyl. If you go uh, sana, inakuwa methyl. Okay? To repeat up of the days of our school. Do you are high school? Uh, but um, the, we also have propyl, we have butyl, and etc. So the branches are of two types. One can be alkyl branch or it can be a halogen branch. Okay? It can be a halogen branch. For example, this. Okay, look at that. Let us try and name this compound. Okay? The formula we have said is the same. Identify the parent name. Parent name is identified by the longest continuous carbon chain. So the longest continuous carbon chain is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 is called butane. Okay? And then identify the branch and position. So we have one, two, three, four. At carbon number two, you have a branch. So, carbon number two, you have a bromine branch. BR. Okay? So, it is a halogen. It is not a methyl. It can be methyl or halogen. Now, because then the, it is called bromine, then we call it bromo. Okay? Halogen, we will say halo. Halo. So, bromo, chloro, fluoro, iodo. Uh, like that. So this is bromide. So you call it bromo. So you say to bromo butane. That is to bromo butane. Okay. So that is how you name. Uh, what exa one last example. That's one example. Two. Let us name this compound. One, two, three. Five. Let us name this. I hope it is big enough to be visible. You see this? One, two, three, four, five. You have CH3, CH3, and BR here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Longest continuous carbon chain. So, the longest continuous carbon chain gives you the parent name. The parent name is pentane now. Now that we have 5. Pent for 5. So, that is pentane. Now, branch. Branch can be 1 or can be branches, can be many. So here you have, uh, at carbon number two, you have, okay, so let me clarify one thing here. Somebody else can say one, two, three, four, five. You see we said uh, this, you start with the end close to the branch. Now because we have both types of branches, we have CH3 and we have a halogen. The halogen takes the precedence. So instead of beginning it at this end, you begin at the end which gives the halogen branch the least uh, number. So you have at carbon number 2, you have a bromine. So that is bromo. Alright? At carbon number 3, so 1, 2, 3. At carbon number 3, you have a methyl. This is CH3. At carbon number 4, you have a methyl. So carbon number 4 again, you have a methyl. When you are giving the name, identify all the branches that you can see. Now, so here, you have at carbon number 2, bromine. At carbon number 3, methyl. At carbon number 4, methyl. Okay? So we begin our naming with the, 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 the halogen. So you have 2 bromo. So that is 2 bromo. Okay? We are done with the bromine. Now, the next one at two different positions. You remember the dye? 
our our second last uh, rule we said for two that are alike you use die so this one becomes so you separate with the hyphen of course you separate the numbers with a hyphen no no the, the number from the name so dash three four okay three and four you separate using uh, a comma and then uh, three four they are two so you say die be the L, and then the parent is pentin. Yeah. Two bromo, three, four, dimethyl pentin. Looking at the name alone, the name alone tells you the longest chain is pentin, five. You have several branches. At couple number two, you have a bromine branch. At couple number three and four, you have a methyl branch. Uh, you have two methyl, uh, two methyls. So that is how you name uh, the isomers. We can never end naming of isomers. They are very many and are of different types. So um, you can actually draw your own compound and give it a name following the rules that we have stated above. So, nafikiri uh, tumemaliza na mambo ya isomerism. If you have any other questions, you can still ask. Uh, keep, uh, keep your attention in the comments. I'll give you an assignment uh, to do there. Uh, by the way, I want to appreciate those who have been doing my assignments. I have three very active students that have done assignments. There is even one that I'm still working on it. Uh, time caught up with me before I completed. So, nafikiri ilikuwa ya Jasper. So, Jasper, I'll do it. Uh, I'll put it in the comments uh, the way you gave it to me. So, uh, for those who are who have been doing this very faithfully, God will bless you. Uh -huh. So, that is, uh, that was all thing about isomerism. Now, uh, let us look at preparation of alkenes very fast. I only want us to look at preparation of alkenes and then we look at the physical, uh, a bit of physical properties and uh, we wind up with the chemical properties of alkenes uh, in very few minutes. Now I'm giving, uh, uh, I'm giving us a general way of preparing all the alkenes but we are of course we are going to use it then in our case study. Now to prepare an alkene so we can say alkenes are prepared by a, a reaction of sodium alkanoate, sodium alkanoate and soda lime. Uh, and we look at an example of this. Alkanoate, we shall do this in organic chemistry too. But uh, uh, basically, sodium alkanoate, when you say alk, okay? Alk can be meth, meth, alk, meth, eth. So you can say methanoate, ethanoate, propanoate, etc. So for example, preparation of methane. So we are using methane in our case study. But uh, we are using methane to represent the other alkenes. But the general form, the general way method of preparation, uh, we shall conclude. So to prepare methane, so e.g. methane. To prepare methane, sodium alkanoate, the alkanoate that we use here is this. So methane is CH3 and then COO reacted with sodium hydroxide. So this is the alkanoate. This one is called sodium ethanoate. Sodium ethanoate. And soda lime is sodium hydroxide. This one is, ah, I don't write the name of this. N-A-O-H. You are a chemistry student. 
so you know this one is sodium hydroxide so it gives you we are preparing the then ch4 and sodium carbonate okay sodium that is three three okay carbon is two two five because um, so this is the gas that we want this is uh, the solutions in organic chemistry formulas symbols don't matter so much so you have sodium ethanoid with sodium hydroxide to give you then this is now then and then sodium carbonate this one is the mixture is heated now this is the analogy or a, a point to note to prepare me then we use sodium ethanoate okay to prepare me then we use sodium ethanoate so me then it's not a must you write this just uh, you can see it. sodium ethanoate now to prepare even okay then you use sodium so this one was met you take it this one is it now we go to prop so become sodium propanoate it is it propanoate uh, to prepare propane we use sodium now this is prop is three so we use one that has four so becomes butanoid okay so i think that is that's just a general formula so the general way of preparing alkanes is a reaction of heating a, a, a mixture of sodium alkanoid and sodium hydroxide then you have um, then you have an alkane Oh, let me mention uh, two physical properties physical properties of alkenes so alkenes let me say physical properties number one they are insoluble in water or slightly soluble because they are uh, water is an organic solvent and these are in organ uh, they are organic compounds so they don't have uh, positive and negative charges as we said is a requirement of substances to dissolve in water so it is insoluble in water but they are soluble in organic solvents number two uh, the, we can say the first the first four are gases at room temperature gases at room temperature the next six are liquids and the rest are gases and the rest are solids so the first four that is then then propane pente, uh, butane they are uh, gases at room temperature the next six from pentane up to decane are liquids at room temperature the rest from decane downwards are solids what does that insinuate number four that takes me to number three and the last one so number three we say uh, melting and boiling points melting and boiling points increases down the series increases down the series due to increase in strength of intermolecular process of attraction attraction okay so the melting and boiling points increases down the group 
due to increase in the in strength of intermolecular forces of attraction down the series. Yeah? We get the water answer down the group in the periodic table. So in the down the series. Down the series is down the homologous series of alkenes. So those are the physical properties, solubility in water. Um, uh, this is state at room temperature and then um, the melting and boiling points. Perhaps we can say because of the, uh, you know, when we did kinetic, uh, kinetic theory of matter, we say forces of attraction are stronger in solids compared to liquids, compared to gases. So forces of attraction are weak in gases. So we are saying if beginning from then, then to then all the way to decay, these forces of attraction are increasing. And you remember when we were doing a study of the periodic table, we said the higher, the, the, the stronger the forces of attraction, the higher the melting and boiling points. Hence our point here. So those are the physical properties of alkenes. Uh, next is the chemical property. Okay, so chemical property of alkenes. Alkenes have, uh, so number one is combustion. That is methane. Methane gas burns in oxygen to form carbon four oxide gas and water. So we have methane burns in oxygen to give you carbon four oxide and water. You can balance that. You have two. So oxygen is two, two, four, two there. So that is all alkenes undergo the same uh, when they are heated. Actually, all organic compounds, when they are burned, you have carbon dioxide and water. The only difference is balancing. Number two chemical property is called substitution. Substitution reaction. Substitution reaction is a reaction where, this is a reaction where an atom, an atom, is replaced by another okay and at atom is replaced by another if you are a fan of football i cannot teach you substitution okay but if you are a non a non fan then substitution is substituting okay changing one for another so because we are talking of uh, uh, chemical reaction then we say substitution uh, is where an atom is replaced by another for example be then now for substitution to take uh, place this is where a, a halogen a halogen replaces hydrogen uh, halogen replaces hydrogen during the reaction And for this reaction to take place, there is a condition that must take place. There must be sunlight. There must be sunlight. Or UV light. Sunlight or UV light. So this is a reaction where uh, halogen replaces hydrogen. Uh, so that we have CH4. Okay. CH4 reacts with chlorine excess, let me say excess chlorine, in presence of sunlight, there must be sunlight to form, so you have four hydrogens will be replaced by four chlorines, so you have CCl4, so instead of CH4 you have Cl4, so this is a, a structurally you have this, uh, then with chlorine to form CCl4. Okay, so 
instead of hydrogen, we now have Cl, 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 of course, that plus HCl. So that is substitution reaction. It is the only chemical reaction which alkanes undergo. So alkanes undergo only one reaction. It is called substitution reaction, where a halogen replaces a hydrogen or substitutes a hydrogen atom. Uh, lastly, on this uh, is the, the, the sunlight or UV light. The UV light splits the halogen into two. Okay? The UV light or the sunlight splits the halogen into two. If you have chlorine, then it splits chlorine into two so that you have chlorine and chlorine. When you go to campus or college, this one will form chlorine and another chlorine like that. But it splits. If it is bromine, Br2, then you have Br2. Br. So this one splits. So you have a bromine. Bromine. This is for further studies. Okay. Okay. So this is a substitution reaction. So the the only um, the only condition that we need is sunlight. There must be sunlight for this reaction to go uh, on. So alkanes have only one chemical property because they do not have a functional group. We shall come and look at alkenes and alkynes and we will discuss functional group. So alkanes have only one chemical property. Now finally is the uses of alkanes. Uses of alkanes. Number one, when we began this uh, topic last week, I gave you the importance of organic chemistry and we said then propane, butane are used as fuels in domestic and also uh, especially in our homes. So we can say they are used as fuels at homes, uh, domestic use. Number fuel for domestic use. Examples are then propane, butane. Those. Number two, another importance of alkanes is that they are used for manufacture of manufacture of methanol chemicals like methanol, methanol. Okay, methanol, methanol. We also have uh, uh, octanes. All those. So, it's used to manufacture these chemicals which are important industrial chemicals. Cycloexam. This one is cycloexam. So, we have methanol, methanol, cyclohexen and other chemicals which are used in industries uh, that makes uh, alkanes very important you can find the other uses of alkanes uh, at your own time so uh, guys that marks the end of our today's lesson uh, today's coverage i want to thank you all for tuning in Thank you all for viewing this video. Uh, I have seen some of the comments uh, from you and I want to appreciate that. So for the other guys who will view it offline, uh, I mean when we are offline, uh, I want to say uh, share these videos, let it reach uh, to more students and uh, all shall be well at this time when you are in, uh, at home. So. Until next time, sanitize, stay safe, God bless you, God take care of us. Bye-bye.